I'm Whitney and I am a studio commission artist. Welcome to the studio today. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, whatever it is for you. Uh, today, uh, I'm super excited. Um, I picked up five new commissions. Thank you very much. And today I thought I'd do something a little bit different. <clears throat> um, I, I don't always, I don't just do painting. Uh, I also, with, with, with large commissions, I'll make my own stretcher boards. So today is going to be making how I make, what I do, the tools I use, and the process I use to make a, a large scale stretcher boards. So in this case, the stretcher board, the canvas will be a 36 by 48. And I will make the stretcher boards first and then and then make the <clears throat> canvas to fit the stretcher board. Okay, so what I have is I cut my art hammer, which is a plastic plastic hammer. I have a one inch wood chisel, and that is so that I can embed uh Put the, put the recess the bracket. Uh, this is a one inch bracket. This will go on the corner of the stretcher boards. And this won't be able, this, uh, the large stretcher boards like that usually don't do too well with the stretcher tabs. So what you would do with the large canvas, if it needs to be restretched, you would take it off and restretch it. I had a 45. <clears throat> this will hold the 45s. And I'll show you how that works later. Stay with me. Okay. I have a planer to round off the edges of the of the board. <clears throat> Some screws to screw the bracket on. Of course, a saw, tape measure sanding and a square <clears throat> and a socket driver for the socket that's in the screw and some clamps so who's ready to get started let's get started so i have this miter box i'm going to clamp to the table so it'll help me hold it hold it on there where i when i saw the 45s on the board And the boards I have is a one by three by eight, <clears throat> which I can get a 45 and a 36 out of each one. I have two of those. Today, I think just for the, uh, the video, I'm just going to do one corner and all of the corners are done the same way. So the first thing I will do to get started <clears throat> is put the board in here and line it up with the 45. I think another uh, another good thing I'll do, and I'll show you that, this is I will put, get about the side, the height of the, miter box right about there and hold up the other end so it's kind of straight well so it is straight so hope all y'all are doing good today and I'm going to just basically line this up with the with the 45 degree on the corner and just just cut the end of it off. <clears throat> I got a, this fancy, awesome miter box that you can press in and holds the board really well, but it's not going to hold that in. 
Go ahead, put this in here. So the front one, the long side is going to be 48, so I'm going to put a mark right there. And then I know I'm going to go this way with it. <clears throat> so put that in. Line that up with the 45 going this way. Clamp it down. <clears throat> Check it with the saw. Make sure I get right on that corner. Perfect. Clamp it down. Hold it. Clamp it down. And this is this is about. This size is wonderful, and I use these uh, these braces so that it, I don't need to use any <clears throat> support in the middle of it. It holds it so well, and it's three inches too. Okay, so cut this. So there you go there's the long side and you want to make sure the 45s are going this way and this way so that when you put them together they'll be put together this way so the next one will be 36 yeah 36 so I'll measure it the same way I did the other one. Put this in here. Measure out 36 inches. And because I do this, I can do whatever size you need. So what you would do if you get a commission from Whitney Art LLC, you can measure whatever the whatever your wall space is, you can measure out how big you need the painting. And I can custom make it up to eight feet. Well, could actually be anything, really. So <clears throat> that's that. Now I'll line up this 
again just like I did with the, the first one. I hold it down. Clamp it on. Make sure it's all square. If you start something when you first start making it, if you pay attention to your angles and squareness, you won't have any big issues to deal with later on. If I do, I can use planer. I can chisel it out. I can sand it a little bit if it's not perfect. But I like to get it as perfect as possible. Perfect as possible. Okay, and let's go ahead and work out some more and get that I think I'm gonna move it a little bit. Just move it a little bit right right there. That way that comes out perfect. Perfectly at 36. Got my angles this way and this way like a trapezoid. the 36 side and I'm going to do these two sides for the video so that you can see that and how that's done and the other the other corners will all be done the same way alright so I'm done with this for now move this over let's see I don't really need this Move this over here. And you can you can keep the sawdust and use that, use the sawdust and mix it with glue and make a nice wood filler that matches the color. But it doesn't matter the color because these this wood will be painted and sealed. I don't need this. <clears throat> And, let's see, here's a little thing that I've learned, is this table has kind of a, a bow on it right here on the corner. So I'll use, I will use a piece of straight plywood. That I know is straight, so the so the board won't curve because I'm going to clamp this. I'm going to clamp this. Well, later after after I do this. Part. So this will be. Let's see. This will be how I will put the boards in here like this. Clamp that down. Let's see what I want to do here. I want to put some boards underneath it on the ends like this to hold it keep it from going down hold it pretty much level
one like, like that. Yeah, that's about right. Perfect. Okay, so wood glue. I will put wood glue on it. Put a little piece of something right here to keep the glue from dripping onto the screw. Try to cover the whole thing, the whole surface of it. Cover the whole surface. This is some good, good stuff right here. It's good stuff. All right, now that I got the glue in place, I will clamp. Clamp this into my 45 clamp, keeping it nice and even. Hold that together. Let's see, I need to go up some more with it. See it? You see the glue kind of start to fuse out a little bit? There you go. Perfect. All right, now I will let that dry, and then <clears throat> I put the, this bracket on here. get some more brackets I have I'll put the bracket on here that's too big anyway I'll just show you what I do so and then I will pick, mark out the size I'll mark it out it'll probably go down here a little bit yeah this is the right this is the right size so after it dries I'll put it Put the bracket on here and mark out where it is and then chisel it out just enough so this bracket will sit flush and it'll be it'll go it'll be down here a little bit so it'll make sort of a <clears throat> a gusset sort of thing so that it's it doesn't have the square square and oh, another thing I do. This is this is pretty cool. This is pretty cool. So pay attention. This part that I cut off will be glued on to here as the gusset part of it to keep it from bending or bowing or any of that stuff. So after that's glued on. Then I will lay this on right about in here. Mark it out. And then chisel it. Lay 
lay this in, screw it in, and that is how I do the corner. So after a couple hours, we'll see, after a couple hours, I will paint, I'll take this out, glue this into the corner of it. Uh, you can see this right here. Let's move this over here so you can see. Okay, so what I'm saying now you can see it after this dries I'll take this out and then put glue here and here and on the inside of the corner and glue this in there right there so I don't have a sharp corner then I will lay this bracket about right in here like this mark that out Chisel out the width, the thickness of this bracket. Glue it in there. And screw it in there. Glue it and screw it. And that is what it will look like. And that will be what every corner will look like. So, there you go. I hope that that will give you enough I hope that will give you enough information so that you can understand the process of how I make the stretcher boards for very large canvases these are very very sturdy and I don't need to put anything all that wood in there because this really holds amazingly well. And the only disadvantage, which really isn't really a disadvantage, is it doesn't have the stretcher tabs. You don't really need it. And with a canvas like this, you would just take all the staples out, restretch it, and you're good to go. So, that's it for today. I hope you enjoyed this. Um, I'll probably, I can, uh, I may, I may do another video to show you the finished part of it just before I get ready to paint it. But once I paint it, you may or may not be able to see, you can kind of see the bracket, but if you don't really look, you won't notice that it's there. And then... Uh, when it's all done, I'll, of course, I'll put a really a heavy-duty wire hanger on here. And one of the best things about this is if you want to have a big, large painting, is it that it's very light. So you don't need industrial hangers or big nails uh, in your wall and it's less likely to fall off the wall um, and of course if you put a heavy frame on it, it it will probably double or triple the weight of the whole painting other than that it's really lightweight it's easy to carry and hold and hang um, i hope that this maybe helps some of you don't be afraid to make your own stretcher boards there's other ways to do this you don't have to have this it just makes it so much easier um, I let it dry on here and let's see no glue spills. no no glue spilled out so I got the right amount of glue on there so that's it for today um, it's been a, 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 a nice long day of painting commissions. Update on that. Um, I'm working on two commissions right now that I hope to be done by Christmas. Maybe a third one. And I've got five new commissions that I'm going to start on next year. So, 
God is good all the time. And man, if you're having a bad day, just try to find something that's right about it. Something you're thankful for. And it just, it changes everything. And throughout the day, I had the, I had these thoughts and I start getting bitter and angry and resentful. And I have learned just to, I don't know how I do it, but I just let it go. And I think forgiveness and thankfulness are, are the spiritual foods that I enjoy feasting on. Also, it really helps to make good decisions and just be honest about who you are and how you feel and don't be afraid to hurt my feelings if it's if it's your truth I would rather you know you hurt my feelings and tell me how you truly feel than to just carry and harbor resentments and grudges it's not good for you and um, that's about it today I think I'm going to let this dry, continue to work on commissions. I'm so excited. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much. So it's been a great year. It's been a, some parts of it have been absolutely terrible. I start thinking about it and I get all worked up and I just have to let it go, be thankful, forgive, find out, just think about what's right. I love Kuda. It, Animals are so important. Um, they help us. Kuda has helped me find the good in me because uh, cats just, they don't judge. They're very non-judgmental. They don't have those human emotions of, that sometimes we carry with us, but you don't have to. You do not have to. This can be a wonderful, good life no matter what is going on. No matter what has happened, no matter what, no matter what. Anyway, this 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 year has ended out absolutely spectacular. I have fireworks are going on in my life because of your support and your love and your acceptance. And I've had a lot of rejection these past few years, and this just means the world to me. You know, I'm just a human being. Uh, with feelings I love to love I need love and that's what keeps me alive and happy and I am happy you know even even sometimes I get depressed and sad I'm still happy I'm still happy so there you go stretch boards for large canvases this is my process this is how I do it it's very sturdy it works has worked really well and in the past I've had no problems with it it, the, it doesn't warp these keep these really this <clears throat> this gusset and this bracket really keeps it from warping and I put that extra craftsmanship into it that I learned in art school craftsmanship is very important very important so I like to take my time and do it right as, as best that I can. And again, thank you. If you're watching, thank you very much. And we will see you next time.